Hey everyone, Cleo here and today I'm going to be talking to you guys about beautiful books and what better setting than next to my Christmas tree. I'm basically actually refilming this because the first time I filmed it the shots were kind of out of focus which isn't really great for a beautiful book video. So without further ado, let's just dive into the books. Obviously, whether a book is beautiful or not is very much a subjective matter. So these are books that I personally really love, but definitely let me know down below which ones of these really appeals to you the most. I'm going to go through this in a random order as there really isn't such a thing as the most beautiful book on my shelves. And I'll kind of give you a small like premise for each of these, but I definitely won't go into these books too much individually because, you know, that would really make this video way too long. But so let's start off with the first one and that will be Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. So this is the first one in a YA sci-fi series that he started a couple of years back. In this one we are following our protagonist called Spensa who is a very obnoxious character at the beginning of this book and that is typical Brandon Sanderson. He creates these characters that you really kind of hate at the beginning of the book and then throughout the book he really makes you fall in love with them uh, through their character growth, through their character development. So Spensa is a character who is very very brash, obnoxious, she's constantly like um, boasting about her achievement, boasting about, boasting about how brave she is, um, but throughout we'll be exploring how there's a lot more to her character and how she's really kind of putting up a facade to hide some of the insecurities that she feels deep inside. So her father used to be a fighter pilot and he abandoned mission and so he was branded a coward. And she's kind of branded a coward by association. So she really wants to become a fighter pilot but nobody really wants her in that position because they kind of all assume that she's going to go down the same path that her father went down. Next up we have The Thousand Autumns of Jacob de Zoot. So I really love this cover, it's very much you know Japanese inspired. The book also takes place in Japan and it has this beautiful blue and white illustration with blue foiling uh, throughout. Don't know whether that will be uh, caught on camera or not. But so I don't know too much about the story of this one. So it is a book by David Mitchell who is also the author of Cloud Atlas which is a book that I find very intimidating for some reason, though I don't even really know what it is about. But so The Thousand Autumns of Jacob de Zoot is about a uh, Dutch clerk in Japan in like the 19th century, I think the story is set in. But I'm very interested to see what type of story we're going to get. I'm going to assume it's going to address subjects of colonialism and things like that. But uh, yeah, I really don't know too much about this one personally. I have it. I've had it for a very long time on my shelves and I definitely want to get around to it in 2021. Next up is a book that I'm very hesitant to go into because it is always as it is always the lowest rated book on my TBR when I like list it like that in Goodreads and that is Gingerbread by Helen Oyeyemi. So I absolutely love this cover. It's got so much foiling going on and it really draws you into the mystery of that background and that well. And that then also ties in with the subject matter because it is a type of like retelling of um, Hansel and Gretel. So in this one we have this family and the mother has the sort of secret recipe for the world's greatest like gingerbread or whatever and she has always maintained that the recipe comes from her homeland but this homeland is a place that nobody has ever really heard about so it is magical realism but I have heard not so great things about it though I did hear that Emma from Drinking by My Shelf read it didn't like it reread it and then liked it but I also don't want to be reading a book twice to be able to enjoy it but hopefully I will have a better experience with this. I definitely don't want to be having this on my shelves and disappointing me because it's just so beautiful. I want to keep it. Next up we have one that is a beautiful book because of the content and so that is Greek Myths by Jean Menzies who is also a booktuber and so I will link her channel down below. The illustrations are done by Katie Ponder and so you also have already this gorgeous simplistic uh, cover with some nice golden foiling. But the reason why I'm putting it on there is just because of the beauty of the page layout. It just got some very gorgeous pages to it. So this is a mid collection for kind of younger readers, but yeah, I definitely still want to explore this from time to time. It is not really one that is on my TBR because I won't like be going through it from page one to the final page. I'll just be picking up some bits here and there, but I definitely do want to make sure that I do pick this up from time to time. Next up, we have one of my favorite books and that is Colorless Tsukuru Tsuzaki and His Years of Pilgrimage by Haruki Murakami. So this is a book that I got like in 2015 or something for Christmas and it took me forever to kind of finally pick it up and once I did I was like why did I wait so long because this is my favorite Murakami now. 
So Colin is Tsukuru Tozaki is about Tsukuru Tozaki who when he was young he was kind of banished from his friend group and he kind of took that in stride because he always considered himself to be colorless. He found his uh, friends in high school to really be these very colorful people, these very standout personality, these vibrant personalities, while he himself considered himself to be quite bland. But so years later, in his 30s or something like that, he finally makes the decision that he's going to go back to his um, hometown and he's going to try and figure out why he was banished for this group, from this group, trying to figure out what happened at that time. So I love this cover just like that, but it definitely, definitely has a surprise underneath. So it has the thematic of a railway station, which ties in with one of the fascinations of our main character, and it has then the four colors that represent the colors that are his friends from high school. So I love that symbolism to the cover. And I'm also somebody who really loves like maps, so like subway maps and stuff like that also really uh, appeal to me. So I guess maybe this is more something that I just find beautiful than something that is generally considered beautiful. But I definitely do consider it one of the more beautiful books on my shelves. Next up, you have a book that in 2019 was one of the dual favorite books of 2019, and that is The Overstory by Richard Powers. So this is a book centered all around trees and it's definitely clear from the cover as well so you have these slices of different trees and in this book we are actually following eight people eight people whose life is in some way or another touched by trees and who in some way or another are going to be involved in tree activism and so each one of these eight characters is linked to a specific type of tree and that is then reflected within this cover so I very much love first of all I love the vibrancy of this cover and just the beautiful aesthetic of it in and of itself but I also love the reflection of what is taking place within the content of the book, this book itself. As you can tell from some of the other covers that I put on this list, uh, this is definitely something that I appreciate a lot when a cover kind of reflects its content as well as being beautiful. So next up let's talk about a edition that I very much love and that is the Vintage Modern Classic Edition. So these are two examples from this edition but I do have more as well. But so I really love Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier and I very much love The Enchanted April by Elizabeth von Arnhem as well. Well, and I do want to collect more within this collection. So I think they're all by female authors. I think all of these books within this collection are by female authors and they are more recent ones so that's why it's modern classic collection but so uh, yeah I definitely want to expand on this collection a little bit more. Another beautiful classic edition would be this vintage classic edition of the Bronte books. So this one in particular is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, which you also have an edition of Woodering Heights by Emily Bronte and of The Tenant of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte. So all together they have this nice black and white pattern that is related to trees or to flowers or something like that. And it also has like beautiful end pages inside uh, on all three editions. So I definitely think they look gorgeous together. And I just also really love the size of this book. Uh, it's just nice and compact and easy to have in your hands. Next up we have Songs of Innocence and Experience by William Blake. So this is a collection of poetry by William Blake himself and the special thing about this isn't necessarily its cover because it's a very simplistic edition though it does have coiled foiling to the side of it. But what I do absolutely love about it is it is an edition in which we get the poem on which we get the poem on one side and we have his print on the other side. The interesting thing about William Blake is so he was an illustrator as well as a poet, but the way in which he did his illustrations, the way in which he printed them, is something that cannot be recreated at this point in time. So there is, they haven't been able to find the exact chemical balance to whatever mixture he was using to create these art prints. So that's just fascinating to consider that you have somebody who was making this product centuries ago and we cannot recreate it at this point in time. Another one with beautiful illustrations inside and the dust jacket set it was kind of um, damaged on its way here is A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness which is a beautiful book but it's also a very moving book. It's very hard and difficult to read this book because it's all about this boy who whose mother is diagnosed with cancer and so it's all about him dealing with the anger of that situation and with the uncertainty of that situation. And so it is beautiful on the cover as well. It also has these beautiful art styles so it has that same darkness to its art. So yeah, it's just a very gloomy, moody atmosphere to it. It also has a beautiful cover underneath the dust jacket, so very much referring to the nighttime setting that most of this book seems to have. Uh, and just highly recommend it. If you guys haven't read this one yet, I definitely thought it was very much worthwhile. Uh, it's quite 
easy to go through in terms of its speed because there are so many illustrations in it that it really is quite quick to go through. However, uh, it is of course also quite moving and quite dark at, uh, and a quite dark subject matter, so you need to be in the right headspace, I think, for this one. Next we've got War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy, so uh, this is just a gorgeous edition. It is a chunker, but you cannot print War and Peace without it becoming a chunker. And there are multiple books within this edition, so this is also a vintage classic edition. So vintage does from time to time multiple books within a certain, within a certain similar theme. So you have the Bronte books which are a certain same style, and so you have Russian classics with that same sort of style. And I have been tempted to get some of the other ones within this series, but I don't know whether I'm gonna do it, you know? Uh, like Anna Karenina, for example, I already have, but in another edition. But if I'm gonna get one, maybe like Dr. Givago, which I want to read, I might get it in this edition as well, because I just think they're absolutely gorgeous. So War and Peace is a Russian classic in which we're mainly following Russian aristocracy, but we're looking at them at the time period of the Napoleonic War, so we're moving in and out of wars, which creates this interesting dynamic to talk about the uh, sort of relationships and the dynamics between couples, for example, but also, you know, you have these guys going off to the front, having to live through these experiences and the way in which that changes their life view, for example, and then these women waiting back home or maybe being relieved from having their husbands away from home. It's looking at relationships coming together, breaking apart. We're looking at new aristocracy versus old aristocracy because we have this character who inherits a huge fortune even though he's actually a bastard child. And he, for example, is also very much somebody who's going to be moving down the path towards Marxism, communism. He's very much more interested in finding a way to further the to further the lives of the common people. And throughout, mostly throughout the war sections, we also have this sort of uh, examination of the idea of history being written by those who win. And so I very much love this book. <laughs> As you can tell, I don't want to just talk about it for five seconds. I very much hope that more people will be picking up. It is a great classic, but amongst the classic, it's one of the like, it's one of the most well-known classics, but it gets read a lot less because of its size. But I definitely do think that there's something there and that uh, everybody should be at least trying it out. It won't be for everybody because I know it's kind of slow moving. It is circular in places, but I absolutely love this one. One of my favorite classics of all times. So next up we have an illustrated edition and that is Northern Lights, the illustrated edition by Philip Pullman. This is one that I recently hauled and I'm absolutely looking forward to diving back into his dark materials in this way. In this one we're following our protagonist called Lyra and in this world children have a sort of animal companion, a demon it's called, and as they are still children this demon kind of changes shapes based off of the mood of the child, for example, and so uh, part of the reason why I absolutely love this one is because I also really always wanted to know, you know, what is the final shape of Lyra's demon going to be? But so through circumstances she gets into all of these crazy adventures and there's a lot of commentary here about organized religion, which went totally over my head when I read this when I was like 12 or something like that, but I do definitely want to reread it now and dive back into this story. I have watched a few episodes already of the uh, TV show, but I think I'm gonna wait until I reread the book. But so yeah, there are absolutely gorgeous illustrations in here. I don't totally don't know whether you see that. Uh, and like this one is also quite dark, but a very beautiful one. And so yeah, very much looking forward to having that story visualized in this beautiful way while I'm going through it. So we have another type of like edition that I really love, and that is the Canterbury Classic. It's kind of a word cloud edition. I think it's also called like that. But now I find it more easily under Canterbury Classic, so I don't know whether they just do the like of rebranding of this or not. But so it has like different quotes from the book, different characters that are important to the story. And so this in particular is Le Miserable by Victor Hugo, which is the only one that I have yet to read, though I am currently reading another one. I haven't finished it yet, but I'm already discounting that one a little bit. But so this is the one that I still have left. And I absolutely love these tiers, so they're super simple, but I just love once again the size of this one, so an easy one to have in your hands. Also, I just love the buttery type of texture that the cover has, so it's a very, like, very... So it's just like a very nice experience to have this one in your hands, and I just love the look of it. I know it's simple, but I absolutely love it. Next we have one that was very popular, I think, last year, and that is Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. 
This is my favorite color. I absolutely love yellow and I think that this cover also works so well. It really grabs your attention. I think no matter where you are, if this is somewhere placed in a bookstore, your attention will immediately be drawn to it because of this beautiful vibrant yellow and blue cover and absolutely a cover that is going to have a dragon on it. It's going to grab my attention regardless, but I also think it's just like a beautiful way of framing this cover with this frame here and then the title over there. I think it visually works out very well this cover and so this is a story in which we're kind of following the rise of an ancient evil and the sort of battle against this ancient evil we're mainly splitting our attention between two rivaling kingdoms we're mostly centering on one where there's also a female female relationship to dive into but i was actually quite disappointed with the fact that we didn't dive further into the other kingdom because i thought that that was quite an interesting one and it had a character who was kind of learning to become a dragon rider and so obviously I wanted more of that and I was kind of let down with that part of it plus the pacing at the end was quite quick there was really like an acceleration and I found that that pacing at the end was just too quick you know it wasn't like um, you know there's no problem with pacing going up at the end this is quite a, a natural development but in this case I just felt like we went like we shifted gears too quickly and and that ended was just like everything was compacted too shortly together so i would have liked a little bit more exploration of that ending and then the final one on here and if i'm gonna say that one of these books is my most beautiful book that at this point in time i would probably say that these editions have really stolen my heart and that is The Fellowship of the Ring by J.R.R. Tolkien. So I have these editions for the entire Lord of the Rings sequence and also for The Hobbits. But so they're just beautiful editions. Um, not only do they have this beautiful cover piece, but so all of the illustrations within this one are illustrations done by Alan Lee. His artwork was also the inspiration for the movies. And so you have, for example, this beautiful troll image of uh, Bilbo and the Trolls. So this is quite a dark one. Not sure where it's going to capture very well on camera or not. And so the general experience with this book is just that I absolutely love reading from it. It's really got like luxury paper to it, it's got this beautiful like black and red lettering, it's got these beautiful illustrations and it's just it's just an absolute an absolute treasure. I would absolutely recommend you guys if you want a beautiful edition of Lord of the Rings. This one definitely is gorgeous. So that was it. Those were my most beautiful books on my shelves. Um, and as I said at the beginning, you know, this is very subjective. Some of these you might have been like, ugh, why is she including them? But so definitely let me know down below which one of these you totally get, which ones you were like, yeah, that is a gorgeous edition. I totally understand why you're including it. But so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this one and hopefully see you guys in a future video. Bye.